five players that Arsenal need to sell this summer. In terms of Arsenal Football Club this season, let's get it straight, it has been an absolute shambles. From starting the season off in such a promising fashion after breaking your record to sign a player like Nicolas Pepe. A lot of Arsenal fans had a lot of hopes going into the 2019-2020 season, but let's just say very quickly that was all put to one side. Because under Unai Emery in the first half of the season, Arsenal really struggled. Struggled to a point where by the time he left Arsenal, we were left in mid-table in ninth place in the Premier League. And so of course with things looking all over the place, Arsenal chose to bring in Man City assistant at the time, Mikel Arteta. And in terms of his first few months at the Arsenal, it was very good. From beating Manchester United 2-0, to clearly seeing that the Arsenal players were finally given more effort. But of course with the coronavirus having put football on pause, the return to football has been nothing short of absolutely shambolic. From losing the first game 3-0 to Champions Man City, to losing the next game against relegation threatening Brighton 2-1 at the MX Stadium. I think it's clear to see Arsenal Football Club is in need of a rebuild. There's a lot of players at the club right now that do not deserve to be at the Arsenal. So in today's video lads, we are going to be discussing five players that I think Arsenal need to sell come the summer transfer window. Lads, let's be talking. Life comes at you so fast, especially when you're an Arsenal fan. Just a week ago, everyone is excited and happy and gassed for the return of the Premier League and everyone's going, yes, Arsenal are back. But then if you fast forward a week, we've now lost two games against Man City and against Brighton and three of our first teamers, Xhaka, Pablo Mari and Bert Leno are now out with significant injuries. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you life as an Arsenal fan. Yo, what is up, guys? My name is Blas Tino. welcome back to my channel. In today's video, lads, we shall be discussing Arsenal and in particular five players that Arsenal need to sell come the summer transfer window. Of course, as I've already said in the intro of this video, there's a lot of players right now at the Arsenal who, let's get straight, are simply either not good enough or simply do not deserve to be at Arsenal Football Club. Needless to say, let's get it straight, Arsenal need a clear out and for some players, it's time to go. But with that being said, guys, quickly before we get into the video, make sure to go down and smash a like on the video, subscribe channel if you are new, and also comment down below your thoughts and your opinions. Let me know in the comments what players you think Arsenal need to sell come the summer, players that you just don't think deserve to be the Arsenal. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Follow my social media on my Twitter, my Instagram and also subscribe to my group channel The Offside as the links are in description. But with that being said guys, let's get into this video and let's discuss 5 players that Arsenal Football Club need to sell come the summer transfer window. Lads, it's time to talk and it's time to go for some of you. Starting off lads, we are going to go for Alexandre Lacazette. Lacazette, boy, it might be time to go. Now in terms of Lacazette, if this was last season, I wouldn't even be thinking about this. Because of course, after all last season, he was our player of the year, he had so many clutch moments, so many clutch goals and overall had a very good season. But this season, lads, needless to say, he has been nothing short of horrific. We are talking about a guy who is a 50 million pass striker, a French international striker, a guy who is 29 years of age now. He is no longer a young prospect and these are meant to be his prime years. And in those prime years, he is yet to score a single, and I said a single Premier League away goal in this entire season. 50 million pounds is what we pay for this guy. And lads, if we're being brutally honest so far, Lacazette Arsenal has so far underachieved. Because prior to coming into Arsenal, the Arsenal team had every component in terms of the midfield, the defence as well was somewhat decent, and overall looked like having a very good team but just didn't have that striker to finish off the chances. But with that being said guys, Lacazette was meant to be the improvement. He was meant to be the guy who was the striker to finally get Arsenal to push on to the titles. But that has simply not happened. Because make no mistake, since Lacazette has come into the Arsenal, we have made the Champions League a grand total of zero times. Now I'm not the biggest fan of Olivier Giroud, I was never the biggest fan of Olivier Giroud. But even with Olivier Giroud, we were getting in to the Champions League. So then you have to ask yourself the question lads, Putting all that bias to a side, was it worth letting go of Olivier Giroud and bringing in Adam Lacazette? Because if you look at the goal scoring ratios and you look at the goals they were scoring, you could argue that Giroud had just as good of a record as Alexandre Lacazette. And that pains me to say that, but it is true, lads. So, lads, if you look into the straight cold facts of Alexandre Lacazette's Arsenal career so far, 29 years of age, not a single Champions League appearance, not a single trophy as well. And in terms of away games, you're practically playing with 10 men with Lacazette on the pitch. And so, for me, lads, I'm going to make it very straight. Personal opinion wise, I think for Lacazette, you've had a time at the Arsenal, and I think it's now time to move on. He's a player who's 29 years of age, he's still a very good player on his day, and I think as a player who, if Arsenal to sell now at his age we can still get a very decent amount of money for him and so what I would personally do is I would cash into Alexandre Lacazette and bring in a younger striker like a Jonathan David or an Odson Edward a player who not only might just be a premium right now but a player for the long term future as well but me lads let me get it very straight to you it's time to move on to the next stage this current stage of Arsenal players it didn't work out it failed horrifically 
and like Zoro Lack is there. I'm sorry to say, but in my opinion, it is time to go. Moving on to the second player, lads, that we have to let go of, and it's gonna be Mezzo Lads, I'm going to be brutally honest now. I am getting very bored of this. We've got a guy here who was our most expensive player. We pay the most money. We pay this guy 350 thousand pounds a week a guy who's 31 years old turning 32 this year and this is our main playmaker and hear this out lads he's got four assists in the last two seasons how does that even happen how does a guy go from making chances after chances being one of the best creators if not the best creator in the premier league to a guy who's got four assists over the last two seasons, every single Arsenal fan was blaming Olivier Giroud during his time at Arsenal. They were saying Ozil couldn't get to his level because Giroud was holding him back. We then go out there and sign two strikers, not one, but two strikers that are £50 million and £60 million, and Lacazette and Aubameyang. And Mesut Ozil's assist all of a sudden disappear. The mind boggles to what's happened there. And so even putting that to the sidelines, the guy is 32 years of age and he does not suit our system. In terms of Mesut Ozil, let's get straight, the man is a classic number 10. And in terms of the way football's going, number 10s are a dying breed. And so with Mesut Ozil, you have a pure number 10, a player who can't play out wide because he doesn't have the pace to play out wide, a guy who can't play deep on the pitch lads because he doesn't have the capabilities or the facilities to defend either. And so what you have then is a 31 year old player who's a has-been, who's nowhere near as good as he used to be, as your most expensive and most paid player, and a player who, we're frankly honest, right now to the Arsenal Football Club is completely useless. In the last two games against Man City and Brighton, he's been either left on a bench or completely left out of the squad. And Arteta said himself, in the first game, he left him out on tactical reasons and so what Mikel Arteta is very clearly saying there is Mesut Ozil does not fit into his 4-3-3 system. I am and I always will be a massive fan of Mesut Ozil. I love the player to death but this is 2020 now and it's time to move on. I am sick and tired of the debates about Mesut Ozil. Why is he not playing? Why is he playing? I've had enough of it. If we're going to have players like this despite their capabilities, if they're going to cause issues and friction, it's time to go because I've had enough and I'm frankly really really bored of it now. So Mesut Ozil as painful as it is to let you go. Four assists in two years is not good enough. Mezit, it's time to go. Moving on to the third player, lads, and it's gonna be Hector Bellerin. Hector Bellerin really does boggle my mind. And Hector Bellerin, lads, if we're being frankly honest, we got a player here who, since the age of 21, has been on a constant and steady decline. Because let's get it straight, in Hector Bellerin, lads, we have a player here who's now 25 years of age, but for some reason, he was a far better player when he was 21 years of age. How does that make any sense? Surely as a player, you're meant to get better as you get older. But in the case of Hector Bellerin, it's just not working anymore. Of course, let me make it clear, the injury that he suffered last season has not helped him one bit. And coming back from such a massive injury was always going to be a very difficult task. But let's get straight lads now. The guy is 25 years of age. He's meant to be the main guy now. And if we're being brutally honest lads, the guy just isn't it anymore. Again, as an Ulster fan, I've always been a fan of Hector Bellerin. I've even got a poster on my wall of Hector Bellerin. How can a man be 25 years of age and yet be so, so naive still defensively? The amount of times that I see my man get caught out of position again and again and again. You're 25 years of age, bro. You're no longer a kid. In Hector Barry lads, the only thing that's rescued him so far is his speed. But since coming back from that massive knee injury, let's get it straight. I'm starting to think now, maybe that really affected his pace. Because if we are being completely honest, if you take away Hector Barry's pace, the man is absolutely nothing left there. But lads, I don't know about you, but for me, I want my right to be a good defender and not a 100 meter sprinter. And it's not just that, lads, but also if you're looking to compare him to the other right backs in the Premier League, that play for rival clubs. Most of those right backs are better than Hector Bellerin. If you look at Man United, they've got Aaron Basaka. If you look at Liverpool, they've got Trent Alexander Arnold. If you look at Man City, they've got Kyle Walker. All three of those fullbacks, let's be honest, are better than Hector Bellerin. So what I don't understand is how exactly do you expect Arsenal Football Club to compete again if you do not have the players to compete against the best? So again, as much as it pains me to say, as much as I was a fan of you and I still am a fan of you, Hector, Hector, I think it is time to go. If you want to go plant trees, go plant trees. But your first job is defending and you can't even do that, Hector. I'm sorry to say. Moving on to the fourth player, lads, is going to be man like Rob Holding. Rob Holdini, where did it all go wrong? In terms of last season under Unai Emery, up until December, Holding was one of our best, if not our best, centre back. A player who was 23 years of age and he was shining like a player he should be. And he was a defender who looked like he could be an Arsenal mainstay for at least the next five or six years. Then came that infamous game against Manchester United where Rob Holding went down with an injury and since then, he has never been the same because of course he suffered a very bad knee injury which kept him out for the remainder of that season and also for the start of this season but since coming back into the Arsenal first team this season let's get it straight he's been nothing more than an absolutely shambolic and as much as I want to say that okay maybe the injuries are holding him back let's get it straight lads we have a player here who turns 25 this year and he is no longer a prospect so as Arsenal fans we need to stop treating him like a prospect and actually treat him like a first team that he actually is and on the single basis of this season so far let's get it straight the man has been nothing more than an absolutely shambolic 
symbolic defensively. Even if you go back to the Brian game the other day, he loses his runner for both goals and we can see two goals. And instead of being a proactive centre back, lads, he was reactive. And that's what Robbo is right now. He's a reactive centre back. And of course, he then let Neil Mopis score the winning goal, in which case now every single football fan in the world is allowed to laugh at Arsenal Football Club. But yeah, in terms of Rob Holding, let me guess right. I think it's time to cash him because he's an English centre back after all, a player with Premier League experience under his belt. And I'm sure if we are to put him on the market, there will be a lot of clubs after him and there'll be a decent money to make off it as well. But Rob, as much as it hurts me and pains me to say, lads, it is time to go for Rob Holding. Moving on to the fifth and final player, lads, and it's going to be Ainsley Maitland-Niles. This guy, you know. In Ainsley Maitland-Niles, we have a player who is a perfectly capable right-back. And you could argue in saying he's probably, on his day, when he tries, a better right-back than Hector Bellerin. But despite him being absolutely perfect for that position, especially in the way Mikel Arteta wants him to play, the guy just doesn't want to play there. But instead, Ainsley Maitland-Niles seems to have his eyes locked onto that central midfield position. And as much as he's had some decent performances there, Ainsley Maitland-Niles is not the player that we're going to have there in the long term because he is simply not good enough. Do you really expect Arsenal Football Club to compete at the top level when you have AZ Mate and Field and you compare it to Man City, to Man United, to Liverpool, to Chelsea? It's not even a comparison. It's an absolute joke if I say so myself. And in terms of AZ Mate and Niles, let me get straight. The man is 22 years of age. He's an English player and that is a very key thing, especially in the Premier League market because if we are to put AZ Mate and Niles on the transfer list, I am sure there will be a lot of Premier League clubs that will be after him because he's English, he's 22 and in the Premier League, that is a very massive premium. And in terms of AZ Maitland-Niles, I think it's very simple. He is the epitome of what we don't need at Arsenal Football Club. A player who has all the talent in the world, but he does not have the mentality to be at the top level. Because make no mistake right now, at Arsenal, the issue is not the talent. We have a lot of talented players there. The issue is the mentality at Arsenal Football Club. We have too many players who, for being brutally honest, are simple losers. Players that are just happy to be at the standard. We should be setting the standard. Ask yourself the question, how many players in the current Arsenal squad even get near the Invincibles reserve team? So to to put it very simple to you, Arsenal Football Club, it is time to get out players like AZ Mate and Niles who simply do not have the mentality to win at Arsenal Football Club. Because make no mistake, we have a lot of talented young players still in this squad. But for me, lads, it's now time to get rid of all this stupid dead wood and move on and enter the next stage, which is finally getting Arsenal where they should be, and that's fighting for a Premier League title. But in the case of the five players I've spoken about today and a few others, lads, let me get straight. It's time to go. But with that being said, guys, I am gonna end the video around there. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to go on and smash a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you are new as well also let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the players i've spoken about and who do you think are to sell make sure to follow all my social media my twitter my instagram and also subscribe to my group channel the offsiders the links are in description but with that being said guys i am going to end the video around there in today's video lads we have discussed five players that need to leave Arsenal come the summer there's definitely more than five players and it's time for Arsenal to enter the next stage and one day someday get to the top again but with that being said guys i'll see you next time in the mix.